Thank you for tuning in with Talk With You, the one and only Christian Motivation Broadcast, hosted by your one and only, Jill Benjamin Georges. Hello, 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 and good afternoon, everybody. How are you guys doing today? How was your day? How was your night? Before I continue, I want to say my number one message. If you haven't received Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, right now is the time and day and hour and second and season for you to accept Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. After that, once again, one second. Welcome to Talk With You. Today, I'm actually coming to you guys with episode 90, and my title today is Being Yourself. Being Yourself, why did I actually come up with this title? To be honest with you guys, I come up with this title uh, maybe an hour, two two hours ago. Because I've actually been talking and seeing a lot of people that actually trying to be somebody else because they actually think like by them being somebody else, they're going to be popular. They're going to be known. People are going to love them. People are going to like them. They don't want to be themselves. So I just wanted to take some time to actually talk about that. Being yourself. I remember when I used to be young in middle school, not in high school, but in middle school. I used to have friends that's popular. I used to have friend. It's not like I wasn't like popular, but friend that actually was more popular than I am. I used to see all the schoolmates having a lot of female interested in them. Having even teachers interested of them, I I wanted to be more like them. So I started acting the way they act. When I see like they act some kind of way, I start acting like it because I thought being me wasn't good enough. So by the grace of God, I grew out of that. You know, I told myself like, I'm just going to be who God called me to be. I don't want to be nobody else. I just want to be who God called me to be. You know, I just want to be who God called me to be. I don't want to be nobody else. You see? One Timothy chapter four, verse four, I should be talking about. For everything created by God is good. When I think about that verse, I say, yeah. 1 Timothy 4, verse 4, actually say, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Receive with thanksgiving. Why do you think the Bible says receive with thanksgiving? It's because there's a lot of people right now, they are doing things, not to pleasure God, not to really say thanks to God. They, they want other people to see what they are doing. So when you do stuff with all your heart, you know, you you do it and it's been received with thanksgiving. I see a lot of people these days when they are preaching. There is a lot of preachers these days, they want to preach like Tilly Jake. The same way that T.D. Jake preached, they preached the same way. The same body movement, the same, um, you know, like, uh, tone, the same level of, you know, like, of speech, the same level of character, the same level of, like, energy. Everything that T.D. Jake do, they do it too because they want to be like T.D. Jake. Because all we, we all know that T.D. Jake is a very famous, you know, powerful man of God. 
That's one of the reasons why a lot of people this day, they choose not to serve God. Because when you follow someone because God is using them, sometimes God allows that person to fall. To show you that that person is just a human being for you not to focus too much on that person. And then a lot of people end up not serving God no more. Or if that person could fall, who am I not to fall? So people this day do not want to be themselves. Thank you so much for the love. I really appreciate it. There's a lot of kids in school. They call them geek. You know, they call them geek. But if you really think about the term geek, it's like you are intelligent. You have a lot of knowledge. You're very smart in school. They call you geek. They use the term geek. But a lot of kids, they take that word in a bad way. What do they do? They say, you know what? You know, people call me geek. I can't have no friend. Nobody want to talk to me. You know? Nobody want to talk to me. Nobody want to hang around me. So they're trying to be somebody they're not. They don't want to be themselves no more. Because by them being themselves, people will call them a geek. But when you think about it, the term geek means that you are smart. Who owned the biggest corporation around this generation? Is it not a geek person? You think Bill Gates was not geek? Bill Gates was a geek. If you look at him, you need, you will automatically know he was a geek, and he still is. But he's a billionaire. You see? He's a billionaire because of his knowledge. The owner of Facebook, he was a geek. He still is. But... He created Facebook. Now, he's a billionaire. This guy have hundreds of billion dollars like in his account. Facebook is a trillion dollar company now. So you should not be afraid being the person you are. People see you as a geek. You should take that as a compliment because being a geek means you are smart in school. That's one of the reasons why they bully you. That's one of the reasons why they do all those kind of crazy stuff. But when one of them have a heart Final exam, who do they talk to? They come to you saying, hey, can you help me with my homework? Hey, can you help me do this? I'm failing my math, my math class. Can you help me with that? So you should not be afraid to be who you are. Once again, 1 Timothy 4, verse 4, actually say, everything created by God is good. God created me and you with his own image. With his own image. That means you are a good creation. Don't listen to nobody telling you that you are not good enough to serve God. Because you are good enough to serve God. He creates you with his own image. There is a good reason for that. Everything you do from the bottom of your heart, God will receive it just as somebody else that's like a very powerful man of God or powerful woman of God that is popular traveling around the world. Never put in your mind that you cannot do the same thing they do. You're able to do more than they do, but don't try to be like them. That's one of the reasons why I tell people, I don't want my show to be like other people's show. You see? I'm not going to preach the way other people preach. I'm not going to talk about God's world, you know, God's message the way other people do it. I don't want to do it the same way church is doing it this day because there is a lot of message the church do not want to talk about. They don't want to talk about sin. I'm going to start talking about sin. I've been losing followers. I don't care if I lose them more. Like I told you guys before, even if I have to go live for one person, I'm going to go live for one person. I don't want my life to be based on somebody else. I hear people saying like, oh, I wish I could be like that person. I wish I could preach like that person. I wish I could sing that, you know, like that person. I wish I can pray like that woman of God is praying. No. That woman of God might be praying for like one hour, and then your lifestyle of prayer is one second. And then your one second mean more than that person that's praying for one hour. So you should always be yourself. You should always know. You should always be proud that you are a creator of God. A, uh, a creature of God, I'm sorry. You know, God created you. God is the creator. Yeah, sorry. 
You should always be proud that God created you. You should always be proud and know that God created you with his own image. Yeah, there's a lot of people saying like, so if God created uh, us with his own image, why do they have people that look so ugly? If God ugly, no, sin. Sin can change the way somebody look. Sin can cause your mother, when she's pregnant with you, to do crazy things. If you're pregnant and then you go on a while, you're doing craziness. You're taking drugs. You're smoking a lot. You're drinking a lot. You're doing all those crazy stuff. You're going to end up causing your child to come out some kind of way that God didn't even want that person to be. Yeah, one question that people might say, oh, God already know the kid was going to be born like that. Why didn't he stop it? No. Remember, God created everybody with, your, with their own will. God will never double-cross you. God will never go, you know, above your will. God will allow you to make your mistake. There's a lot of mistakes that we made when we actually um, come to our sense knowing that it's, it's, it's our fault. Then we go to God, and, and then God will resolve that problem for you. So, but God will allow you to make your mistake. A lot of kids, I've been seeing like on TikTok, on YouTube, in different countries, like in, you know, in um, some country in Africa, some country like in Asia somewhere, um, Indiana somewhere. Like kids, there's one kid I saw, he looked just like a monkey, like his face. It's changed like a monkey. And there was another video. This lady, she made a baby that looked, the baby was half monkey, half human. And they asked her, why do your child look like that? She said, she told them she slept with a monkey. So we're doing the things to cause other people to come out. Not the way that God want them to, you know, not the way that God want them to come out. Because of the thing that we do. So don't blame everything on God. God created us with his own image, right? And then he put his knowledge in us. The same way that God able to create things, we're able to create things too. You see? We're able to deform somebody, you know, like, you know, a baby by the thing that we do, the craziness that we do. Drugs, everything else like that will, will deform a baby. That's why there's a lot of baby that is deformed. And there's a lot of baby that was born before them time. Their body having, you know, having divided up. So it's not, be, it's, it's not because like God wanted them to be like that. No. So don't blame everything on God. You know? I'm not saying like it's a bad thing to actually have somebody that you look up to. You're able to have a mentor. Everybody need a mentor in their life. Somebody that you can talk to. Somebody that, um, that can give you good advice. Somebody that can, you know, like tell you what he or she did that make him be successful. It is good to have someone to look up to, but don't try to be like that person. Always try to be better because your mentor wants you to be better. There's a lot of mentors, they don't want that, but there's a lot of them when they being your mentor, like they're talking to you, they're helping you. They want you to do more. They, they actually did. Your parents will always want you to do more. They did. They don't want you to be just like them. Do the thing that they do. They want you to be better. If your parents don't want a child to be better, it's because they don't love you. You know? There's a lot of parents, they are very hard on their child. It's because they've been through a lot. When they was young, they went through a lot. They had a bad, they have, you know, bad, you know, um, experience during their lifetime. So when they have their own kid, they are very tough on that kid because they don't want the kid to go through the same thing they actually went through when they was very young. Some of them end up going, uh, um, end up going overboard because they are doing too much. And then you have some parents, they want their child to come out just like them. No, I don't agree with that. Because your child have her own way of life, 
his own way of life. God created everybody to be a different way. Because you want them to come out just like you want them to act, talk, do the thing that you do, you forcing them to live a life that'll pleasure them, that'll make them happy. That's one of the reasons why there is a lot of kids. Thank you again for the love. That is the reason why there is a lot of kids when they grew up, they start doing craziness because they didn't have the freedom to do the thing that they wanted to do. So they was forcing themselves to be something that God didn't call them to be. In the back of your mind, because the way you are is good, the way you are, you know, you become successful, the way you are, you become a good wife, the way you are, you are a good wife, the way you are, you, you, you are a good mother, so you want your child to be the same way. But that's not the way God created that child to be. So don't try to fuss them. If they end up making a mistake, doing something that you, you never teach them, doing something that you never did, that don't mean that you have to get mad about it because your life is not their life. This generation that we are living right now is a very crazy generation. That's why it is good to raise your child into the God kingdom, to teach your child about God, teach them verses, you know, to teach them about God, to teach them about the love of God, to teach them about the knowledge of God. Yes, it is good to teach them about the knowledge of the world because they need to know when they are out of your house, they need to know what to expect. But the number one thing that your child should always learn is about God, the love of God, who created them. Because when they actually leave your house, they're going to be hearing a lot of crazy stuff, multiple different stuff. If they don't know the truth, about God, they might end up choosing a false God because the scientists, Satan is using most of the scientists to make it look like God does not exist. To make it look like there is no God. So, when they grew up, a lot of them, they start to become atheists. They start to become this, they start to become that because they never knew about the true God. If it was me, it's best for you to raise your child to be just like God, not just like you. To show your kid when God was on earth, that is the way he, you know, he lived his life. To tell them to live your life the way God did, the way Jesus did when he was on earth, not the way you did. But I'm not saying that for you not to protect them. But you just need to be careful. You know? It is not good to be somebody else because you are forcing yourself to be something that you're not. Oh, yeah, that person is a millionaire. Let me follow his life story. Let me go online because there's a, there's a lot of millionaires. They, they have their life story in the internet because they... Some of them wrote a book about their life, what they went through. So you, you do some research about them, and then you find out what they actually did to make them rich because they wasn't born as a rich person. And then you say, you know what? I'm going to start living my life the way he did. No, that's not a good thing to do. Living your life the way he did doesn't mean that you're going to be successful as he, you know, the, just, just like he is. Trying to live your life the way that millionaire lived his life or her life might cause you to fail. And then in the back of your mind, you think that you will be successful just like that person just because you live your life according to that person. Thank you so much for the love. It is not good. You should always live your life. It is good to do your research to see, to find out what they did and then learn from that. But don't do exactly what they do. Try to always be better. My mindset, I want to be better than all my mentors. I don't want to be like them. I don't want to do what they do. I want to do more. I don't want to serve God just like they serving God. I want to serve God more and better like they are doing. They bring 1,000 people to God's kingdom. I want to bring 100,000 to God's kingdom. 
I don't want to win 1,000 just because they win 1,000. No, I don't want to be like them. You know, they pray seven days a week, 24-7. I'm not going to pray seven days a week, 24-7. I might run myself crazy. They might have the time to do it, but I don't. So I'm going to look for other ways to praise God and pray better than they do, but not 24-7, not seven days a week. If I'm able to do it seven days a week, 24-7 a day, okay, that's fine. You know, the strength that God put in them, I mean, I have it to do it seven days a, seven, uh, seven days a week, 24 hours. If I'm only... Hello? If I'm only able to do it two hours a day, seven days a week, I would do it two hours a day. If I'm only able to pray two days a week, I'm going to pray two days a week. But I'm going to make sure that two days that I am praying is really a powerful two days of prayer. You know? So never try to be like somebody else. Always be yourself. And I promise you, there is a lot of us, when, when, when we start being ourselves, we will be very, very successful. A lot of you, you are going to depression. A lot of you, you are going to anxiety. A lot of you, you having those suicide talk in your mind that you want to come in suicide is because you want to be like somebody else and then you are not able to, that, that, that puts you like into depression. Hey, what's up? You see, that make you go to depression. But when you start being like yourself, the way that God wants you to be, you will start being successful. You, you will stop taking all those medicine that you are taking right now. You will stop going to depression. You will start going to anxiety. You will start, you know, you know like, you know, in, uh, stop going to anxiety, stop going to depression, and, and then stop going to all those suicide thoughts. Like you want to commit on uh, commit suicide because the person next to you is successful. You want to be successful like them, and then you are not able to. Thank you so much for the love, everybody. I appreciate it. You know, we need to start living our life according to God. We need to start living our life according to the way that God wants you and me to live our life. There is so many different calling into God's kingdom. There is not only one. There is a lot of calling into God's kingdom. Yeah. So, we need to be very careful. You know? You have maybe a brother, you have a sister, or you have a friend that go to school to be a, to be a lawyer. And then you find out people that's being a lawyer making a lot of money. You say, you know what? Let me be a lawyer as well. And then you find out that going to lawyer school is very hard for you. You're not able to study. You're not able to learn everything that you're supposed to learn. Then you start stressing. And then your friend or your sister or your, or your brother, whoever you are, you are following, is doing good into that class. It's because they was meant to be a lawyer. You not. Find out what you are meant to be. You know, be yourself. Somebody might be a police. It doesn't mean that you was born to be a police officer. Somebody might did like 30, 40 years into the police economy. Nothing bad ever happened to them. And then you become a police your first day of duty. Something bad happened to you. You, you end up in the hospital. Find out what God has for you. Find out your calling from God. If God wants you to be a good Housewife, be a good housewife. If God wants you to be good to your husband, just be good to your husband. If God wants you to stay home, cook for your husband, do the laundry, do all those stuff, do it with all your heart. It doesn't matter what your friend are doing. 
Just do it. If God wants you to be a businessman, be a businessman. Just find out exactly what God wants for you. Stop following the footsteps of other people. The only footstep you should be following is the footstep of Jesus Christ, the way he was on this earth. Don't listen to what other people are saying about you. It doesn't matter if they are you know, all laughing at you. It doesn't matter like if you are if they're making fun, you know, like of something that you are doing, that you know, that don't matter. As long as you are doing something that first, pleasuring God, second, that make you happy, it is good. Just do it. I said that before, I'm gonna say it again. If God only bless you to have a two-bedroom apartment in a 1999 car, just have it with all, with all your heart, with all your mind. Drive your car like you are driving like a million-dollar car. Take care of your car like it is your baby. Maybe God is testing you. God is giving you a test to see if you're going to take care of that little thing he gave you because he has something better for you. He got something greater for you. But by you looking at other people's success, and then you end up like want to do something that God do not want you to do, and then you put yourself like in trouble, then you want to call God because you're trying to do something else. Show God that you're able to handle the little he gave you before he gave you something big. If you're not able to handle that little thing that God gave you, how will you be able to handle something greater than, than that little small thing? Huh? Just be yourself. Everything that God created is good. Everything that God created, ladies and gentlemen, is good. Proverbs 16, verse 3, I should say, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plan will be established. You see? Commit your work. Know that you are God, you know, like, Know that God created you. Know that everything you do, everything that God created is good. Try to find out what God wants you to do. And then you commit your work. You, you, you commit everything to God so your plan can be established. After you find out the person that God wants you to be, and then you start being like somebody else, you go on your knees and then you say, Lord, thank you so much for revealing to me what you want me to be. But I commit that to you. Help me to uh, help it to establish in my life. Just because you know it doesn't mean that you have to go ahead of God. God might want you to be that person 10 years from now, but you're trying to go ahead of God. And those are the things that the enemy do. The enemy will come. Ahead of God, trying to introduce you something. There's a lot of you, Satan been asked you um, to sell your soul for money. I told you, I told you guys that, you know, I, I told you guys that testimony already, that vision, when Satan appealed to me, offer my soul for money. Want me to sign a contract for money, and I deny it by the grace of God. But there is a lot of people that the enemy is doing the same thing. It's because God has something great for you. The enemy. Is going ahead of God. The enemy know that God has something great for you, but he don't want the blessing that God has for you. He wants you to take his blessing. So he's coming to you as an angel of life, pretending that God sent him to offer you that. But God will never, 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 never say to give me your soul for this contract. So give me your soul for that money. God would never say that. So oh, if you have something like this happen to you, you need to think about it. Mm. So the enemy want me to sell my soul. It's because that God has something great for me. Sometimes the answer is right there. We're just not paying attention to it. Oh, the enemy want me to sell my soul. Oh my God, I don't want to do it. And then you're stressing about it, but God is giving you a sign. There is a lot of you, the devil wants you to be a voodoo man, you know, to be like, you know, like, you know, somebody that, that do wish crap, somebody that do, that do that. 
It's because a lot of you, God called you to be a pastor. God called you to be a bishop. God called you to be a prophet going around the world, preaching the word of God. But the enemy go ahead of God. He's using the skill that God already put inside of you. Don't listen to the enemy tell you that I gave you this. No, he didn't. And God created you with that. He know what God put in you. You just don't know about it. So he's using it on his own way. The enemy might say like, oh, I can make you like, you know, I can make you like that, you know, that per, um, person. You want to be a powerful man of God? I can make you like TDJ. I can make you like that person. I can make you like this person. And then you say, oh, that is very good. It can make me like TDJ because I always wanted to be like TDJ, but it's not from God. God called you to be greater than the person that you want to be. God called you to do much more than that person that you are following, that you want to do like they do. God wants you to do much more than that person. God wants you to be more powerful than that woman of God that you want to be powerful, you know, just like she is. God wants you to be more powerful than that woman of God, than that man of God. You see, you should always want to go further. You should always want to be better. If you are listening to me that people have been calling you a geek, if you are listening to me that people in school or college, wherever you are, you should be proud of that. Because the term of geek is meaning that you are smart, you are intelligent. You have a lot of knowledge. You should be proud. The geek, to me, the geek should be the, the one that's popular. You know, maybe every popular people, people should be a geek, should become a geek. You see, I don't want to be popular and then like I'm doing dumb stuff. You know, like, you know, like, no, I want the full package. If I'm popular, I want to be, you know, I want to have knowledge. I want to be intelligent. I want to be the next person that create the next, you know, biggest Facebook platform or the biggest technology, you know, like the biggest thing. A lot of you, the person in your school that's bullying you because you are a geek, they're going to end up working for you one day. I promise you. One day you will say, I remember. I was watching talk with Jew. He actually said that. A lot of them end up working for that geek they actually been bullying when they was in school. Because they was only popular when they was in school. That's it. When they graduate, that's it. They, can, they cannot be popular in the world. They was only able to be popular within that school environment. Outside the school, nobody know them. Outside the school, they, you know, like, you know, like, they, they was than a geek. But you, you are not popular in school, but outside the school, you are popular because a lot of people coming to you, asking you to do their homework for them, to help them with their math, to help them with their, you know, economy, to help them with their science, you know, project. You see, people know you. They're coming to you. But those people that's popular in that school, I bet you, there is nobody outside that school that actually come to them and help, ask them for help. Some of them don't even know them outside the school. But you people know you, so you should be proud. Don't try to be somebody that you are not. God did not create no one to be like the other person. God only created us to be like him. You see? Jesus even went further. Jesus said, you will do more than I do. You see? You will do more than I do. So if Jesus did not call you, if God did not call you to actually do more than the person that you are following, why? He said, you will do more than I do. Even Jesus himself said that. You will do more than he did when he was on earth. You see? You will do more. So God called every one of you. Thank you for the like. God called 
you and me to the better than somebody else. Stop dressing the way other people are dressing. Stop yourself from talking the way other people talk. Stop doing the thing. Always, you should always want to be a good follower, not no, a good leader, not a follower. Me, I don't want to be no follower. I want to be a good leader. I want to be a good example. And the people that I am a good leader and a good example for should want to do more than me, want to be a better leader than me. Not the same leader that I am, but you should always want to be a better leader than I am. You should do more than I'm doing. You should behave yourself better than I am behaving myself. You should help more people than I am, uh, more people than I am helping. If I'm helping like 100 people, you should, you know, always want to help two, three, 400 people. Do better than I am doing. Do better than that person is doing. Don't put yourself in the same level. You know? Teachers in school, they are teaching you to be better than them. They're not teaching you to become a teacher. They're getting you ready for the world. They want you to be better. Yeah, you're going to find maybe one, two of them. You know, they don't want their kid to be more success, um, their student to be more successful like them. But 99% of the time, they want you to be better, do better. You know? God called me to do this show, right? I do it three days a week. You know? And I have a background like in my, you know, like, um, you know, a poster, you know, a design in my background. And then you're watching me right now, and then you hear the voice of God saying, I want you to open your own show. But don't try to do it like I'm doing it. Do it better. If you have the time to do it three, five days a week, do it five days a week. If you have the time to do it like three days a week, but you do it like two, three, four hour a day. Me, I only do it for one hour. Sometimes the Holy Spirit push me to go more than one hour. Don't try to have a poster behind you just like I do. Try to have a better decoration. Because pretty soon, my show going to look different. It's just like I'm waiting for the right time. I mean, I have that background. You know? There's a couple of equipment that I purchased. I haven't had time to set them up. Because I've been very busy. You know, I haven't went live for like six or five weeks. Because I was going through some stuff. Now that I am back with you guys, you know, I'm getting everything back together. Pretty soon, I'm not going to have that background. I'm going to try to make my background more better. I'm not going to use green screen. So I'm trying to be better. The reason why I say don't be better like me or don't be better than the person that you are following because that person always want to do good. So you, you will never catch up because you're just trying to follow that person. You're trying to follow that person, and the person keep pushing himself to do better. You will never catch up. So you need to find other way for you to take a shortcut somewhere else to actually go ahead of that person. Because if you are following, you will always be behind because the person is going forward. The person want to do better. The person want to do good. The person want to do more. But you're just following. You will never catch up. The person is driving like in 100, you're driving like in 45. So look for like a shortcut. There's always a shortcut. Look for a shortcut somewhere else. So you can pass that person. Be yourself. That person could have took like 20 years to be successful in his ministry or in a business, whatever the person is successful at. And then when you be yourself, you only take you like one year. To do more than that person is doing. You know? 
God created us with his own image, and he also gave us his knowledge to create, to do more. You know? There's a lot of you. Maybe you're watching me live right now, you're listening to me like on audio, on Spotify, Apple Broadcast, Google Broadcast, wherever you are listening to me, wherever you are watching me. If you're going to watch that video, for the people that are going to watch the video after my life or days later, months later, years later, there is something that God wants you to create because you're not trying to figure it out what he wants you to do. You haven't done it yet, but it's been time for you to do it. There's something that God wants you to do because you are following somebody else. You're not able to because your mind is so focused on that person, trying to be like that person. You're not giving God time to actually talk to you. God is talking to you right now, but you are not paying attention because your mind is focused on that person. You want to be an actor, but you're following another actor. When God wants you to be a better actor than that person. You want to be a singer? You are following somebody else, but God wants you to do to be yourself, to sing the way that he created you, to sing the voice that he gave you, to use it in another way. And then you're going to pass that person, but you are to stick, you know, like you trap yourself in following with that person. God is telling you to stop. God is telling you right now to be yourself. You will see what will happen. Be yourself. You will be less stressful. Be yourself. You're not going to go to, the, to all those depression, anxiety, PTHD that you are going through. Just be yourself. You know? Be yourself. And then start being better than other people around you. Because everybody else you're trying to be better, they might be trying to be better too. So you're just going to keep stressing, keep stressing, keep stressing. Oh, my God, I cannot catch up with that person. Every time I get close, he did something different or she did something different. Now I'm going to have to do that too. You're going to keep going to that circle, 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 circle. And you're going to keep going to that depression, that anxiety. Then the enemy is going to talk in your mind. You see, you will never be like that person. Oh, you dumb or you stupid. Then you're going to, you know, the enemy is going to draw you down. Then you're going to start feeling... You know, like feeling sad for yourself, feeling bad for yourself. Oh, my God, I'm dumb. I'm stupid. I can never be like that person, blah, 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 blah. That's what the enemy do. Then you're going to have the suicide. The enemy going to say, why don't you kill yourself? You will never be like that person. Why don't you kill yourself? But when you be yourself, you're not going to go through all that. Because you're going to focus on stuff that God called you to do. You know? Focus on you. You know? A lot of you, you love to help people. It's a good thing. You've been going around. You've been going around helping a lot of people. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but I'm trying to say something. But when other people look at you, you're not taking care of yourself. You know, you are not taking care of yourself. You're not sleeping well. You're not eating well. Your face look all wrinkly. You look very stressed. Like I said, it is a good thing that you are helping people. That's a good thing. That is a marvelous thing. Because God called us to help our neighbors, to help people around you. But focus on yourself. Sleep good. Put some time aside for you to sleep well. To eat healthy. Go to the gym. Me that talking to you, I need to take myself to the gym too. Get your bill paid. You're having problems. You're spending all your money helping other people, but you're not paying your, you know, your house. You're having problems. You're having problems with your landlord because you're using every money that you have to help other people. That's not, that's, not, that's not a sign of you having wisdom. 
If you have wisdom, you know that you need a place to stay. You have to pay your bill. You was going to do that. Make sure that those stuff, take care of your household before you go out taking care of something, somebody else. Just because you see somebody else is doing it, but it doesn't mean like they are not taking care of their self. See, I say it is a good thing. It is a good thing to help people, but you need to do it the right way. So, I don't know who I'm talking to. I know I'm talking to myself because I, everything I say, I take it, you know, upon myself. Take some time. Think about your life. Take some time. If you are people that love to fast, fast about that. God, what do you want from me? What do you want me to be? What are the things that you want me to do? I don't want to keep following somebody else. I want to do the thing that you want me to do. I want to be the person that you call me to be. I don't want to be like somebody else. I want to preach the way you call me to preach. I want to preach about the message that you call me to preach about. That you tell, you know, the message that you want me to say. I don't want to keep preaching the same message like that person is preaching. I don't want to have the same business that the person have. I want to have a better business. Like you, you just take some time and think about those stuff. You know, think about your life. Think about yourself and think about your life. We are living like in a time right now. A lot of things are going crazy. You know, there is a lot of other stuff that God called us to do. Like I just said not too long ago, we're not paying attention to God's voice and God been talking to you for years. You haven't been paying attention to God's voice. And then a lot of people are suffering because of you. Because God... There is a lot of you. God called you. There's people that God called you to bring to him. Only you can bring that person to him because he called you to do it. There's a lot of all the work that's supposed to be done into this earth. They're not going to be done because God called you to do it. It is your job, your, your responsibility, but you are too busy on something else. Trying to be cool. Trying to be a hair pop. A hair pop. Trying to be an actor. Trying to do this. But that's not what God wants you to do. I want to be an R&B singer. God wants you to be a gospel singer. I want to be a worldly actor. God wants you to be a Christian actor. You know? I want to be, you know, like, I want to have a billion-dollar company. God wants you to have a non-profit organization where you're spending your own money to help people. I want to bring a thousand people to God's kingdom because that person is doing it. God wants you to only bring two to his kingdom. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to focus. Focus your mind on God. So you can be able to hear when God is talking to you. Ask God for wisdom, understanding, knowledge of Him. When Solomon, when, when God asks Solomon, ask me anything and I will give it to you. Shoot, if God could to me right now, oh my God, I don't know. God said, ask me anything, and I, and I will do it. Man, I don't know. You know, I probably say, God, I want to be the richest person on earth. <laughs> but Solomon say, just give me wisdom and, and, you know, you know, like, and knowledge for me to lead your people. And then God said, just because you only ask me for wisdom and knowledge, I will give you more. So God blessed. It's because God saw in, in, in Solomon's heart that he wanted the money, but he was smart to ask God for wisdom and understanding so he can be able to lead God's people. So God said, I will give you that, but I will give you your heart desire. I will give you more because in your heart, I know that you want more. So God bless him. In Solomon's time, Solomon was like the richest king. Solomon was more rich than David. You see? So 
So take some time and ask God what he wants for you. Take some time and tell God, I want to I wanna do more because you say you, we will do more than you when you was on earth. Stop following other people and follow Jesus Christ. After that, if you haven't received Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, right now is the time and hour and season and second for you to receive Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. That is my number one message. That's why I make sure I say it in the beginning of my show and the end of my show. Because I don't want God to say, like, you've been doing this for years, but you never tell people to accept my son into their life. So that's why I say it. And I'm going to say it again. If you haven't received Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior right now, is the time and day, in hour, and second, and season for you to receive Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. Don't say you're going to do it tomorrow because you don't know if you're going to survive after you, after you stop listening to me right now or watching me. After that, I'm going to end right here. And um, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, thank you for becoming family. You know, my, my family on Facebook kept going up and down. Um, I had 11,900 something. Now it went down to 11,800 something. But I'm praying God so he can send his people to, to become my family. Continue sharing my show for me, guys. Um, there's a lot of people, they pay people to put bot, you know, fake followers into their account so they can seem like they have a lot of followers, a lot of subscribers. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I have the money. I could do it, but I'm not going to do it. I want God to bless the show because he called me to do it. So I'm going to allow him from now on to do it. You know, like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, even if I go live three days a week for one person, there's only one person watching me every day, and I'm going to just do it for that one person. When God is ready to bless this show, when I go live so I can have 10,000 people watching me live or, you know, you know 100,000 people watching me live, that's when he wants to, not when I want to. But continue praying for me, guys, and I'm going to continue praying for you too, guys. Share my uh, my page for me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed. As you guys see, like, in the screen, all the stuff are coming. I did not, I don't think I add my TikTok, but you can see, like, in my background, you see my Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Follow me on those platforms and help me to grow this, this ministry. And I know God will bless you. After that, have a good day. May the Lord God Almighty be up on you guys, be with you guys. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Love you guys. Hello. Thank you for listening to Talk With You. We hope that you have enjoyed our show. And please don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Talk With You. If you have not done so, if you did, we just want to say thank you for your support and have a wonderful day.